Good morning. I've got to be honest, it feels a little weird uh, to be bringing the Sunday morning sermon while I'm sitting on the couch in my office on Thursday afternoon. But, you know, with this coronavirus stuff going on uh, in and around Italy, we don't need to panic. There's certainly no reason to do that in our area. Um, and as believers, we, we know, we recognize that God's got everything well in hand. Um, so there's no reason for us to panic, but it is wise for us to take some, some precautions. Um, and two, if there it does happen to be some cases of this coronavirus uh, that breaks out in our area, we don't want to do anything that would bring a bad name to the church. So I think it was a wise thing for us to just be able to cancel our services today uh, and meet this way over our YouTube channel and over video. What our intent for this morning, our services was going to be, um, was to hear some testimonies from our Moldova mission trip. You know, our, our team was there last week. We just got back on Monday. And, and let me just say thank you uh, to everyone who had any kind of part in that mission trip. We had many of you were giving faithfully and, and providing the financial resources to do the work that was done there. Uh, many others were praying faithfully and, and undergirding what we did there and, and calling in uh, God's Spirit to enable us. And so thank you for your involvement. But we had eight people from our church that went to Moldova, uh, and we were joined by four from Rome Baptist Church, um, one from the International Church of Milan, and one person from the International Baptist Church of Bucharest, Romania. Um, and so what, when, as we were talking as a team about bringing these testimonies this morning, um, I gave each of the team members four questions to answer that, that they could structure their testimony around. Uh, because, you know, it's important. It's good to see pictures uh, when you go on a mission trip. It's good to see those things and some, some photos of what took place. But when you hear the stories and, and you get a sense of how God impacted both the teammates and how he was at work in other people's lives, boy, that is powerful. And that really speaks. And, and so we wanted to have these testimonies this morning. And what I want to do in these next couple of minutes is I want to answer the four questions that I gave to the team. Um, I also want to use Jeremiah chapter 1 as our text to kind of, to kind of undergird and sort of as a, as a guide for the questions as I answer them. And so if you've got a Bible with you, um, or if you're joining us on version this morning, um, go ahead and take it out and follow along with me. I'm just going to read two verses, Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. So you follow along with me. And this is Jeremiah speaking. He's, he's telling us what God said to him. Verse 7, he said, But the Lord said to me, Do not say that I am a youth, because everywhere I send you, you shall go, and all that I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Let's pray together this morning. Father, we thank you that you are always with us. And Lord, we thank you you involve us in your missionary work. And Lord, as we hear some stories about what took place in Moldova and we're able to think about how you spoke through your prophets in the past and how you enabled them and empowered them to carry out your work. Father, we just pray that you would impact our hearts and speak to us powerfully and boldly. And Lord, challenge us to step up and stretch ourselves a little bit uh, to be involved in the work that you have left us here to do. And so, Father, we pray for your blessing on these next few moments. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the first question that I ask the teammates to think about and to answer is this. Tell us about something that had a significant impact on you. And one of the things we said to the team over and over again was, when you go on a mission trip, uh, we, we go there thinking about what God's going to do through us and how he might bless others through the work that we do. But we're never prepared fully for the impact of what God's going to do in our lives. Uh, and in our passage this morning, what has happened, let me give you a little background here. What has happened is God has called Jeremiah to be his prophet. And, you know, prophets uh, it was an office of the Old Testament, an office even of the New Testament. Uh, those times God spoke through those men, a very real way spoke his word through those men. That office doesn't is, isn't active today. 
But the essence of what God was calling Jeremiah to do was to share his message of love. And frankly, that is a, is a role that in, in that sense, every one of us still is a modern day prophet in that God wants each of us to share his message of love. Now, so God calls Jeremiah to be his prophet. Listen to Jeremiah's response in verse 6. Jeremiah responds back to God. He says, Alas, Lord God, I don't know how to speak, and I'm a youth. And maybe you have felt that way, and certainly I know all of us have at some point in time. Jeremiah is saying to God, I'm not qualified. I'm, I'm, I'm not old enough. I, I don't even know what to say. And we know this is my fourth trip to Moldova. And every time we've gone, um, I have just been completely blown away by the members of the local church. Uh, many of them took time off work to help us and to be there. They were there, they were there with us all week. And you have to know that they absolutely cannot afford to do that. And as we looked around the church, from the youngest person that was there every day to the oldest person that was there, they were involved. Um, and they were doing whatever it was that they could do. And, and here's the thing, and I shared this with the church the night before we left. I am convinced they weren't just doing those things because we were there. They do them every single day. And, you know, as God spoke to Jeremiah and he, and he called Jeremiah to be his prophet, Jeremiah pushed back like many of us do many times. And we say, I don't know what to do, Lord. I don't think I'm qualified. I don't think I've got what it takes. I don't know what to say. But God's response to him was there in verse 7. Don't say that, that you don't, you're not qualified. You're not enough. Everywhere I send you, I'll go. I'll give you what to say. God will give us what we need when we step out. In our gospel reading plan on version this week, we're reading through the gospels. If you're not a part of that, um, I encourage you to, to jump in. We're going to start, we're finishing up the gospel of Luke here in the next couple of, couple of weeks, and then we're going to start the gospel of John. So I encourage you to jump into that if you're not there. But the devotional Wednesday said this. He said, being a disciple of Jesus means participating in Jesus's mission and making it your own. And that's something that really had a significant impact on me there in Moldova. These people at this church were participating in the mission of Jesus. They made it their own regardless of the cost, uh, regardless of whether they were the, the most qualified person in the church or the least qualified. The second question I asked the teammates to, to answer is describe an experience where you saw the Spirit of God at work. I love that response that, that God gives to Jeremiah. Don't say I'm a youth. Everywhere you go, uh, I'll, I'll send you and you will go there. And, and all that I command you, you'll speak. Don't be afraid of them, for I'm with you. I'll deliver you. I love that response. You know, that's the same thing that Jesus said to the church in the Great Commission, Matthew chapter 28. There in verse 20 of Matthew 28, Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. As we went around Moldova and did work there, we, we saw God work at work all over. In the lives of our teammates, I saw the Lord at work. As with many of the trips, the previous ones that I've taken Every time, there are first-time missionaries uh, on the trip. This is their first mission trip they've ever taken. But they all stepped out of their comfort zones. Uh, they all allowed the Spirit to stretch them and allowed God to work in them. And I'm sure at many times they, they felt look, just like Jeremiah did. I'm too young. I'm not qualified. I don't know what to say. But they, but they stepped out and trusted the Lord. One of the church churches that we served at after the service, the ladies came up to one of our, our team members, Rochelle Roach, and, 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 and the lady asked Rochelle if she would share a few words to the women of the church. Now, Rochelle was, was completely unprepared for that, completely unscripted as she, as she stood in front of those ladies. Uh, but I got to tell you, as she spoke, those ladies were wrapped with attention to what she was saying. Afterwards, one of them uh, came up to her and said, you know, this must be from God because it was exactly what I needed to hear today. 
two of the ladies that we visited, and we think about where we saw the Spirit of God at work, two of the ladies that we visited told us that they had a sense from the Lord that someone was going to visit them that day to talk to them about their relationship with Him. What an amazing way that we saw God go ahead of us and prepare the ground before us. One of the men we visited, his name was John. Um, and on that particular visit, we had Natty Tully with us. She's the pastor's wife at IBC Bucharest. But she was our translator. She's Moldovan. Uh, but Natty is not a regular translator for our work there. And as we were talking to John, John was hard of hearing. He had a, a really bad hearing, and, and he couldn't quite follow the translation. He didn't know whether to listen to me or listen to Natty, and he was really confused about what was going on. And I got to tell you, Natty didn't miss a beat. Now, she jumped right in. She, she shared the gospel message with him. Uh, and I praised God that he had gone before us, that he kind of worked things together, that Natty would be with us on that visit. Um, the other translators, they're wonderful young ladies, but they're a little more reserved than Natty. And I'm not sure they would have stepped in in that moment. But Natty just stepped out, shared the gospel. We really saw the Spirit of God at work. In our teammates, uh, in the people that we were visiting, uh, it was just an amazing thing to see his hand of blessing on what was being done. Third question that I asked the team to answer is, what did God teach you about himself? Every time we serve the Lord, every time we get involved in his work, God teaches us something about himself. He's given us all of his word, and that's, that's the reason why he's revealed himself in his word, to teach us about who he is and to teach us more about himself. And then there was something that God taught me. It wasn't new, but it was a powerful reminder that God is faithful. That was his, his message here uh, to Jeremiah that I'm sending you, Jeremiah, but I'm going to be faithful. I'm not going to send you and leave you on your own. And so often we, we fall into doubt or we fall into fear because we can't see the end result. And that's exactly what happened to Jeremiah. He allowed the fear of the things he couldn't see. He focused so much on his own limitations rather than the unlimited potential and power of God. And he couldn't see the end results and it caused him to fear to say, oh, no, no, hold on a second, God. I'm not the right guy for this. I, I don't have what it takes. And the lesson that, that you can't help but take away from something like a, this mission trip is that God is faithful and no one is forgotten. You know, we were visiting the people that, that for the most part, nobody in the world knows about. Nobody in the world cares about. They get a visit periodically. This church does the best they can to try to keep up. There are 100 or so widows in this community. It's a small church, and they do the best they can to keep up with them. But most days, these ladies are completely forgotten by everyone around them. But as we, as we interacted, we, we saw God at work, and, and we say that, that one of the takeaways is no one is forgotten. He notices every one of us. He desires salvation for the one who's got the highest station in life uh, to the lowly widow in the small, broken-down house in the little village of Krihanaveke, Moldova. And, you know, we were just reminded as we interacted, as we, we saw the hand of God at work, as God revealed himself to these people, we were just reminded that he started this work long before we boarded the plane and flew to Moldova. And we were, we were just right there in, in, in the place where he wanted us to be. And as we worked together, the, the people of that church, they planted. And we watered and came along and watered those, but it was God who was causing the growth. And, and a, big, a big takeaway, a big lesson for me, just a reminder that God told me about himself is that he is absolutely faithful to complete the work that he has started. And then the fourth question that I asked them is, 
What is one thing that God revealed to you about yourself that needs to change? As we interact with the, with the Lord through his word, uh, through prayer, uh, through serving, through giving, God is not only teaching us about himself, but he's challenging our hearts. Where are areas where we are not the men and women that God wants us to be? And how can we submit those areas to him to allow ourselves to grow? And so the, one, of the things that, one of the things he changed about me, it continues to tell me and to work on. I don't know if this is a problem for you, but sometimes I see people and I make assumptions about their lives or about their walk with the Lord. And he's working on me on that matter. He did on this trip, challenged me again as we were out there, reminded me that things aren't always what they seem to be. At many of the homes that we visit, we encounter the husbands, not only widows there, sometimes there's a couple and we'll encounter the husband. And it's easy, it's the middle of the day, we're visiting these guys, it's easy to make assumptions. Why are they there? Uh, alcoholism is huge in Moldova and and it's, so it's easy to make assumptions about these guys. Maybe there's something wrong with this guy. Why isn't he out there supporting his family? We met one man, uh, Vasile, who was at home with his wife. And, you know, it was easy to, to look at him and say, what are you doing here? And what, what's going on? Are you one of those that's fallen prey to alcoholism? But Vasile wasn't an alcoholic. He wasn't somebody who didn't want to work. Vasile's wife had lost her left leg to diabetes, and she was bedridden. She, she couldn't get up. She couldn't move around. They had a wheelchair, but he, somebody had to put her in the wheelchair so that she could go to the bathroom. She could get out of bed periodically. And Vasile was at home, not because he didn't want to work, not because he had uh, alcoholism or one of those other social problems. Vasile had quit his job so that he could stay home and take care of his wife. No, that's not even true. He quit his job so he could stay home and dote on his wife. And it was an incredible thing to see this man, both Vasile and his wife came to know Christ during that visit, but it was an incredible thing to see him taking care of her, the compassion. There was no resentment. There was no anger on his part. His heart was broken for the condition his wife was in, and he would do anything to serve her. And God really revealed to me this this tendency to, to make assumptions about things or about people and, uh, and it, to lay that down at his feet and say, Lord, would you just change me? You know, those are just a few of the thoughts and that I had, a few of the ways that God spoke to me during this, this trip. And we didn't create any of the mission opportunities that, that we were a part of there. God created them. God went ahead of us and God came in behind us and he told us like he told Jeremiah, go to everyone I send you to. And then he went and he plowed the ground. And then he walked with us while we were in the work. And then he hemmed us in behind. And I have every reason to believe that the seeds that were planted will continue to be watered and continue to grow because God is faithful to his work. And you know, you we are ne never in those missionary situations by accident. Maybe the situation for you is at work or it's at school or it's just a relationship that you've developed here in Aviano, but we're never in any of those situations by accident. And let me just encourage you, pray that God would help you and take the lessons that we shared from this mission trip and see every opportunity around you as a mission opportunity to share the love of Christ, to plant seeds for his kingdom. And then follow him as he leads. God will be faithful to you as he was faithful to us. Well, if you want to talk with me after this service, after during this week, you know, Jeannie and I are leaving for the States on Monday. I'm, av I'm available via email. I'm available via WhatsApp. Uh, Gary Preston, his wife Suzanne, will be here for the two and a half months that I'm gone. If you want to speak with somebody, me or Gary, about how you feel God is calling you, to serve him in a greater way, to step out for him, to be more of a missionary in the field that he's put you in. 
uh, please let us know how we can help you, we can pray with you, and we can encourage and equip you to be involved in that work. God bless you, and I pray you have a wonderful week, a wonderful Sunday time with your family, uh, and just a time where you're celebrating who God is and what he's done in our lives. Would you pray with me this morning? And Father, once again, we, we just thank you for your love, for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that though you don't need us in your work, you allow us to be involved in it. You invite us to be involved. And then you join us in it. Lord, you're such a wonderful God, such a faithful Father. And Father, I pray for everyone who is listening to this, watching this video today, and Lord, that you would pierce every one of our hearts with, with a, an encouragement and an excitement to be involved in the mission work that is around us and to consider ourselves as missionaries in the workplace, missionaries here in Aviano and to the uttermost ends of the earth, to go to everyone that you send us to. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.